Aloha, everyone. Thank you for joining us here with Healing with Aloha podcast. I'm Desin Hakias. I'm the host on the island of Kauai. And on this podcast, we talk about grief, mental health, passion, and healing. Uh, we definitely want to give you hope and healing um, and just being able to, to find your way to, to, to heal through the things that you're going through. Um, today, I have a special guest. Um, her name is Sophie Mills, all the way from Australia. Uh, let me share a little bit about her. Uh, she's a spiritual grief, oh, sorry, a sacred debt educator and a gentle parenting coach with a background in holistic occupational therapy. She helps mothers who lost their parents their children, siblings, and even spouses to thrive alongside um, their grief and integrate the loss in a way that creates expansion and adds purpose and meaning in their lives. Uh, She, with parenting a little one, she provides a safe container for women to come together to share their experiences, to grow and learn, to unity and to, to heal on a deep level. She also teaches mothers how to talk to their kids about that and provide a heap of play ideas to help the children process it all. So I'd like to give a warm welcome to my guest, Sophie. Hi, Sophie. We got, we're here. (laughs) Um, You know, I'm so thankful that you've chosen to do what you do to talk about grief because like, as we were talking before, there's so much that we go through in life. And this topic doesn't come up naturally, like in conversations, but it's something that we do need to talk about because the fact of the matter is that we're gonna live and we're gonna die. And yes. so, it's, and it's, it's part of us. So I'll share with people a little bit about yourself and what led you to, to do what you do to, to help make a difference in people's lives. Oh, thank you, you're so right that, <laughs> No, it doesn't come up naturally. And in fact, people avoid it almost at all costs. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Especially if somebody says, you know, oh, my such and such died. and people, Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. And then they quickly move on, <laughs> you know, and they make a joke and then everyone just kind of feels the awkwardness and then moves on as quickly as they can. That's certainly my experience in my culture. You know, I grew up in a very sort of typical Western culture where we didn't really talk about death and about emotions um Mm -hmm. and that's not to discredit my family or my my parents that's very common um but yes at sort of in my early 20s I had my dad die Mm -hmm. and at that time he I was his next of kin he was a quadriplegic so I was his carer um we were we were friends we had a beautiful relationship you know it was so multi-layered that he was really like my person, you know? Um, And so when he died and I didn't do emotions and I didn't talk about death, (laughs) I was like, oh, (laughs) what do I do here? My person died, but I have no skills and I I don't know where to go. Um, And yeah, I, I really suffered for a substantial period of time, but at least sort of two years, I really, really suffered. Um, And at some point, along the suffering journey, I decided I don't want to suffer anymore. And so I I went searching. I tried an array of of, um, therapies, some alternative therapies, some um, more mainstream, and I read a gazillion books to get myself to now where I am, which is a, a spiritual grief coach. And actually in my bio that wasn't mentioned, I'm also a death doula. Um, to bring me into a space where I am comfortable with death and uh, very comfortable with my own emotions and know how to process them in a way that brings me great joy and great expansion and to now see the world as a beautiful gift. You know, I I think that's special. Like you were saying that you have to go through your, like you suffer. Hmm. And I think when someone has lived through an experience, and then they reach back to help someone else who's going through it. I think that empathy and that compassion, it's, it's a different connection that you can have with people that is, is unlike 
you know, you can get educated on a certain topic or, you know, or field, but when you come across someone who, who's gone through it and they're not judgmental, but they just hold space for you, it just creates that um, safety. Yeah. There's this whole other level of like, I see you, you know, yes. and no two group is the same, but it's like, I've been through that fire, <laughs> you know, and maybe my fire is not this is exactly the same as yours and da, 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 but like, I see you, you know. Yeah. And, and do you find that that um, makes a difference um, for people when they, they feel that you connect to them in that, that special way? Absolutely. That for me, even for me personally, that's where my healing happened was being witnessed by others, by from my now partner, but also, you know, I've attended many grief circles and mother's circles and it's through being witnessed in those places in my complete raw vulnerability that healing has happened. And so now full circle. Yeah. When I just sit and hold space in that really uncomfortable area that you know when someone says my such and such died and everyone else says oh I'm really sorry for your loss and let's move on really quickly I say oh and we sit in that awkward silence and that's where the tears flow yeah and I think it's it's needed you know to, for us to show up for one another because like you said it it for people who've never experienced loss it's awkward yeah and, and then for, for those of us who have gone through it, it's like, like you said, there's, I, I'd say like, there's that respect that, that, yeah. that respect, like you don't have to be anything else or be anywhere else. And it's okay to be here. Like whatever yeah. you're feeling, whatever you're going through, it's okay to feel and let's it be fully present with what's coming up and accept it. And then let it go you know when we can sort of be with that the energy in the room and the emotions that flow that come up it's sort of like ah oh, thank you I've been carrying that all by myself for so long and you just kind of allowed me to sort of lift it off and and let it out and now oh, I don't feel so heavy you know <laughs> but the thing with grief is that the waves keep coming yeah. so you almost need someone there each time <laughs> Yeah. To like rescue you when you go like it's like surfing, right? If you, or if you're in the ocean and the waves are pounding you, you know, you're gonna get stuck under the, the water, the waves. And then sometimes you, you need help to come back up for air because yeah. you're drowning in it. Yeah. You know? Um, do you find that um people like they fear um giving into their feelings um or their emotions because they don't wanna they, they fear I'm gonna have a breakdown. And I'm not going to be able to recover. Yeah, I hear a I, lot. I, I, I can, I've felt that before. Yeah. And it's scary. Like, I get it. It's, it's scary to feel out of control. And a lot of people think that once I start, I'll never stop. The tears will never stop flowing. The anger will never stop coming. Whatever it is that's sort of the, the overwhelming emotion, it will never end. And one of the biggest things I try to teach people is that nothing is forever. You know, and we know that because your person died, right? Or whatever it is, your, your relationship ended or whatever you're grieving about. It's, we know nothing lasts forever. And that includes emotions. You know, you can feel the height of rage that your person's not here. But if you sit with that and you process it properly, it will ebb and it will flow. And mm -hmm. at some point it will stop flowing so high and it will just flow, you know, as a natural part of life. You know, I used to have what I call these grief sessions <laughs> where I would actually set aside time, say, okay, I'm, you know, I'll put an hour on the clock and just whatever comes, that's what will come. And, you know, I used to just cry and cry and cry and cry for an entire hour every single time. And it really felt like this is never going to end. You know, I... My love for my dad is and was so deep. There's no way this is ever going to end. But it did, you know, and then when I kept setting aside these hours, oh, all of a sudden I'm noticing I'm looking at photos of him and I'm laughing or I'm smiling or I'm reminiscing about this joyous time that we had together. And, oh, you know, only one tear flowed that day. 
you know, for me, crying is really healing uh, for others. Yeah, it, me it, too. Yeah. You don't need to cry, but um, that's why I'm constantly referencing crying. But for anyone watching this, you don't need to cry to be able to process your grief in a healthy way. It's just what works for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. But um, yeah, nothing is forever. You know, it, it, it feels like a lot. And I guess one of the challenges is finding the sweet spot, which is not suppressing our emotions so much that we don't process them and that they get stagnated in our body and cause sort of illness and, and other challenges in our life, but also not feeling them so much all the time that we're, we go into overwhelm and then we can't function in our everyday life. And there's, there are ways to sort of find that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, do you have any tips how to kind of navigate and start finding that sweet spot? Because uh, I think we were talking earlier about, uh, oh, we were talking about how we weren't taught how to feel. And yeah. for some of us, we're scared to feel um, because um, when you experience a loss, that is the most important time to practice self-compassion. Yeah. But if you've always yeah. put others above yourself, culturally, maybe you're taught that way as a child um, or just like society, when, when, when you experience a loss and all of a sudden you need to change your boundaries with people so you can protect your energy um, and give yourself time to process, it's hard. Yeah. Especially if that's built in culturally and from a, a family sort of perspective. Um, yeah, look, look, it's challenging. The, the biggest thing I, I try to suggest is to create space in your life. And sometimes that's hard if it's, for example, a spouse has died and you've got two, three, five kids, whatever. There's not really going to be much space. And so sometimes the best you can do is cry yourself to sleep at night when the kids are asleep okay you know but you know in circumstances where it's possible where you've got family and community support it is asking people hey can you take my kids for two hours I'm feeling really tender and really raw and I just need some time and then invite a friend over or call a therapist or find someone that can witness you in your pain that's the best way, in my opinion, to fast track, although I say that very much in inverted commas because nothing feels fast when you're grieving yeah. the loss of someone, but the, the quickest and, and easiest way, in, in again, in inverted commas, in my opinion, is to create space in your life and then find someone to witness you in your pain that will not try to problem solve for you, that will just say, yeah, like this is awful it really is awful and I'm just going to sit here in your awfulness and I'm going to accept you for exactly whatever is coming up for you even if you are feeling like you wished it was a different parent who died or you know that you're mad at all the other people that still have their children alive if it was your child that died you know all of that is welcome and I see you in it and it is valid and I love you anyway you know that can be just the biggest healing thing for someone yeah, I, I agree because um, for some reason, um, you know, I, I've lost uh, like my dad, my sister, um, my grandparents and whatnot in different ways, unexpected mm -hmm. to um, help. Uh, I don't know, for some reason, I noticed I what welled up and I don't know if the listeners can relate, but sometimes there's like this self-hate of maybe guilt of why did I, why am I here? You know, that mm -hmm. person is such a good person. That person is so special. Why am I here? Not them. And then so it's like you're living, but then it's like you, you feel like like a zombie. Like I'm here, but I'm not all here. And that's why like you and I were talking earlier about the importance of um, being present, not thinking too much about the past and not like giving too much attention to the future and then being present. Um, can you explain to people why that's important? Yeah, there's, there's two things that came to mind while you were talking and I'll talk about the presence in a second. The first thing I wanted to say is that loss and, and grief can be, it can shine a torch on the areas in our life that need healing. Mm -hmm. 
And what I heard you saying just now is, you know, there was there was self hatred or there was something that, you know, about you that 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 would have actually already been there, sitting mm. kind of beneath the surface. But nothing profound had happened in your life to really highlight it. And and now here there there's a loss or or a death, and these kind of old traumas get brought to the surface mm. for processing for healing and in my opinion if we can view it this way which is a real challenge and it's it's not the common uh, narrative that we have but if we can view loss and death and pain and adversity and and challenge as an opportunity for growth then all of a sudden you know <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll use a less extreme, but all of a sudden we lose our job and we say, yay, you know, there's something that's going to open up here for me because the, the you know, this is getting a bit spiritual, but the universe is creating these circumstances in my life to, to bring something to the surface for me to process. Now that thought process gets much more challenging when it's the death of your child or the death of your parent or your sibling or someone that is just so deeply loved by you for you to go, yes, they died, yay. Something is going to be brought to the, you know, to the surface for healing. Like that's a really hard place to get to. But, you know, I often find that after quite a few years of processing and tenderness that that people can sort of see, wow, I, I've, I was transformed there, you know, and all of that, the trauma and the grief and the pain from my childhood or from that relationship you know, when I was young, whatever, it got brought up. And now I am an expanded person with with less trauma living in my body. Right. Because I, because it had to come up. Yeah. Um, so that was that's the, the first thing that came up. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other thing in terms of being completely present in the moment. This is sort of. Again, there's, there's spirituality that comes into this. Um, you know, there's some Buddhist practices and yogic things that come in here about being fully present in the moment. But the philosophy around yeah. that is that if we can be only here and only in this exact moment right now, nothing else can actually exist. And, and pain and challenge only exist when we're living in the past or in the present, when we're attached to these kind of ideas really this idea that I I love someone who has died or you know and we're attaching a thought process to the fact that well they they were here and they're not here anymore and I'm sad about that whereas if we are just here painting <laughs> loving the fact that we were painting being fully completely present in the here and now nothing else exists and if we're doing something that we truly enjoy, then there is no pain. So that's that. That's the sort of other part. And that's why I really encourage people to, yes, feel your feelings and grieve and be witnessed in that, but also find a space in your life where you can just walk in the trees or swim in the ocean or paint a beautiful picture where you are just completely present and nothing else exists. And the more that we practice feeling that joy and that flow in our body, then the more we can create it in our lives. No, no, thank you. And 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 that's something to wrap your brain around. You know, like that's something like yeah. I get it. But for people who are listening to this, this may be a new concept for them. But um, that you, you can love and you can um, feel... Uh, whatever it is that you're going through but like when you can get to a point where you can start to choose activities that allow you to be present um to enjoy this moment even though it's it, the one thing I, I hear people say initially is like they, there's that guilt of being able to enjoy life because maybe they were taught that when someone dies that you feel sad and that's grief and so when you start to feel happiness or joy, it's like, it's, a, it's bad, yeah. you know? And so um, I think like for people who are listening, this is new to you. It's like, what, you know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? I can enjoy life. Well, but um, well, and 
it also comes back to that whole thing of nothing is forever, right? Nothing is constant. Everything is always changing. And it's impossible to be sad every moment, even directly after a loss. You know, someone will still, you'll think about a joyous memory of the person who died, even within the, the few days of them dying. And it's okay to go, oh, that really was a beautiful moment. Oh, I feel joy in this moment. Oh, but now I feel sad again. And, you know, and you sort of teeter between, but nothing is forever. And so it's mostly about being present with your own emotions in that exact moment. So if you feel joy in a moment, feel it and feel it without guilt and don't, you know, force yourself to then go back into that sadness because the sadness is going to come. Somebody you love died. Of course, sadness is going to come. So it's really about just being present with whatever comes up and then processing that in the moment and then moving on to the next emotion that flows and the next emotion, the next emotion. But yeah, there is so much guilt around feeling joy or doing something for yourself, especially in those acute stages after somebody dies for sure. Yeah, no, um, I, I agree. Uh, one, one of the things I think what you did that is special is that for women, you created a, a safe place, like a container, um, mm -hmm. a grief revolution, um, like a Facebook group page. Can you explain to people what, what you found was helpful in, in creating that space? Yeah. When women come together, <laughs> just something magical happens. <laughs> I, uh, it's just, I think, I think women feel safe with women a lot of the time. Um, you know, things are changing, but it's still this, this beauty that can flow when there is this well-held sort of container full of women that are willing and open to just be. It's that witnessing again, you know. And in this, this Facebook group that I have, I post quite often, um, you know, things about my own journey and, and sort of tips and tools to help women process. But within it, we also have, you know, women posting videos of themselves talking about their story and sharing it and, and others supporting them, saying, I see you, I've been there, you know, yes. And then, and then encouragement of you are grieving perfectly, you know, it's messy and that is exactly what it needs, to, what needs to happen. You know, we're not in there problem solving saying you need to do this and, you know, start dating again and <laughs> don't date or, you know, yeah. these, what are you these, doing? These yeah. Say, like, yeah, your spouse died or you need to get back out there or no, it's too soon to get back out. None of that. There's just hey we see you and again it's it's that witnessing and and yeah being held and feeling like I belong here mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We, and we need to feel that way because we're going on a seeding journey and as much as we love our family and our friends they're going to experience it differently their grief is going to be different from ours but when you can um, find people who can have compassion and empathy for you, then that's what is going to help you to, to, to carry on in your journey. And then that's what, that's what you got to do. You know what I mean? You got to allow people in that you feel safe with. Like you said, it's a safe container um, and that people can just be, because sometimes if you're like, like how the women can feel safe in your, in your group, if they tried to do that with their family or friends, they might just not be received so well. Yeah. And, and it's and okay because it's awkward and fine. But like you guys try to explain like in this space, it's okay. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and often it's our families that they love us so much. That <laughs> they it's, it's too hard to see us in pain. Yes. You know, and they just want us to be better now. Same for our friends. I just want you better. What can I do? You know? Well, actually, you can just sit in the awfulness with me, you know, and for a lot of people, it's really uncomfortable. Yeah. And and that cultural thing of suppressing it and trying to move on and, and just be it's yeah, it's it's a real challenge. And I'm so grateful that I get to hold that space for all the women that need it. Yeah, no, totally. Um, well, I know that, you know, as much as I'd like to stay here and talk to you forever, we both are moms. <laughs> and so um, can you. Um, share with people what is the best way for them to connect with you um, online? 
Yeah, there's a few ways depending on which platform people prefer. So um, on Instagram, I'm the underscore grief underscore revolution. You can probably just type my name in as well and I'll come up, which is Sophie Mills. Um, the other way is through Facebook. So um, I have the Facebook group called The Grief Revolution with Sophie. You can find me on there or um, otherwise just email, which is sophie at thegriefrevolution.com.au. Well, thank you so much for um, having this conversation with me. Um, you know, like I, we spoke earlier, like a lot of times we can feel alone when we're going through our grief journey, but there's other people out there who are more than willing to, to love and accept us and to help us hold space so that we can move forward and stay present. Um, and, and it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to experience joy and to be able to, to feel at peace and and adapt and, and accept change. But thank you so much for your time um, and being my guest, guys. Um, get to know Sophie, follow her. Um, if you're looking to be a part of a group of women that can have empathy and compassion for you right now as you're grieving, um, definitely um, join her group on Facebook. And guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sophie. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you so much for doing this. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>